you see the sleep deprivation in my eyes? Oh, this is why I've been a little MIA. This is Gomez, our new family member. Trying to paint or literally do anything with him around is absolutely 100% impossible. Uncle Boy. You want to bite my face? Yes, you want to bite my face. Are you a monster? We love you. So since I have zero free time right now with Puppy Boy, I've been spending a lot of time looking for inspiration for painting, not actually painting. <laughs> really been feeling inspired by water right now and water painters, and I followed this guy for forever. His name is Wade Kaniakowski. Gomez. So the Instagram handle is Ocean Art by Kaniakowski. He makes just the most beautiful, vibrant water and wave paintings. I'm a super big fan of doing studies of other people's works so you can figure out how they make the things that they do and all the techniques that they use. He works all in oil paints, but I decided to do a variation of one of his paintings in acrylics and make a tutorial out of it so you can check it out. This isn't an exact copy of one of his paintings, but it's heavily influenced by one of his paintings. Mesh dark. But just be cute for the camera. That's all you gotta do. You don't need that. Bindi's looking at him like he's an idiot. So this is a simple acrylic wave painting that's intermediate to beginner. If you're a beginner and want to make this, go for it. It's pretty simple and I think you're going to enjoy the process of it. My intention for this piece was to go for Wade Kaniakowski's style because I'm so into it and want to learn from him. Also to go loose and kind of rough and not really worry about making everything super smooth or super detailed. So it's not a long one. It's a quick, loose painting. So let yourself just have a fun time with this. And don't get too hung up on imperfections and details, just go for it. Get your paint, get some water, paper towels, an array of brushes, and something to paint on, and let's get started. So here are the colors I use. I have titanium white, cyan blue, ultramarine blue, uh, cadmium red light hue, and cadmium yellow medium hue. It doesn't really matter if you have the exact same colors as me or not. If you have a red, a blue, a yellow, and a white, you're gonna be just fine. You don't even need two blues, I just like a little variation. Use what you have. I'm making a little bit of a light colored wash with some white and some blue so I can sketch out what our wave looks like before I start blocking in my colors. So here I'm drawing the very top of the wave, right where the curve starts. And then this is where the lip starts to fold over, where the water starts to thin out. And then also where the water starts to break and foam, that little wiggly line there. I'm also showing some little lines to indicate which direction the water is moving. So it gives it a little three dimensional effect so I know exactly what our wave is looking like within space. Then I'm taking a nice flat brush, I'm taking white and I'm taking blue, the ultramarine blue and also the cyan blue, and I'm making like a sky blue kind of color for this very back section of our wave. It's gonna be a color that's reflected in the sky that obviously we're not gonna see in this painting, but I want that color still to be reflected in if we could see the sky. I'm darkening that color just slightly with some more blue, a little bit of yellow, adding a little bit of white back in just so I can lighten it up just slightly. And this is what the bottom section of the curve of our wave is gonna be. It's kind of the most flat part of the water just before the wave curves. Also reflects a lot of the sky. And then I'm slowly gonna darken it for the middle section of the curve in our wave. You'll see me using a little bit of red in there too. It mutes the color down if I use a red and a yellow with the blue. I'm darkening that, obviously, but not too crazy. And then I'm blocking in this color here, kind of using my brush strokes to generally follow the motion of the waves, those little lines we'd sketched out before, but not exactly. What we're doing here is blocking in color. So like it's looking sketchy, you can see through to the white still, the brush strokes are very, very evident, but that's okay, because we just want some color to work on top of first, and then we're gonna go over again, do all our details. This is another lighter color that we added a little bit of yellow to, so we can see that light is starting to come through that wave a little bit. We have a little bit of a transparency effect as that starts to turn into a lighter teal, like we have little rays coming through our wave. You also see me blocking that in at the top of where our wave is, but not fully. Lightening this color up a little bit too, blocking in the rest of where the lip starts to curl over. That's just to show that it's thin so light can get through it a little more easily. That's why it's a little bit of a lighter teal. I'm using a scraper knife to scrape off all my excess stuff. You don't need one, it just makes it life a whole lot easier when you're painting if you have a little scraper knife and a glass palette, which is what I use, I love it. 
mixing up a light blue again to go over that blue in the background so we can get a nice, clean, solid color. It's looking a little bit sketchy before and you can leave it totally like that, but I just wanted to clean it up just a little bit so it was nice and solid. There was no transparent spots. It was looking really nice and clean. Also, just really quickly taking a little bit of a light blue and just stroking it through, giving just a little extra texture. We're gonna add more texture later, so don't really worry about it. Darkening this blue and then putting it over the bottom part of the wave where the water's kind of flat just before it starts to curve again, just so that we can cover up all those little inconsistencies, all the, the white showing through. And again, darkening for the middle color, adding red, adding yellow, and kind of moving in the same direction as I want the water to move, brushing that on, and you can see me kind of crossing over. I'll mix up the light blue and the darker blue to create like a transition color. This isn't a painting where I'm really focusing on blending. Instead, I'm working on layering the colors on top of each other. I want this to have a loose kind of feel. I'm not worried about perfect blending, perfect details. I want this to be a fun, quick, loose painting. Lighten that up, add a little bit of yellow, creating a teal kind of color as another transition color up to my lightest color. And adding that too in the area where the wave is starting to break, but it also has some transparent water. Getting blue in there, getting yellow in there, adding more white, lining that up as we get to the part where the water is really, really transparent. It's almost like a jewel tone because of the light hitting the water from the back. We're adding that to the top there. Lightening it once again with a little more white, a little bit of yellow, but not too much. You see me scrape off a little excess yellow there. And adding it to this topmost part of our wave where the lip is curling over. Giving a really pretty color, really showing that there's light coming through. Keep it loose, don't worry about the details. Again, I'm not really blending here, I'm layering. I'm layering slight color different variations because I want it to be quick, I want it to be fun. I don't wanna, I don't wanna focus on the energy that blending takes, I just wanna block in some color and get a neat image going. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking pure white and a little bit of ultramarine blue, and this is where I start drawing the shadow of our foam. So usually you think of foam on a crashing wave to be white, but the shadowed area of that, instead of making that gray, adding black to our painting, which can really make it dull and muddy looking, I'm going to have the shadow be a little bit reflective of the water and make it light blue instead. So you can see me drawing in places where I want the crashing part of the wave to be nice and shadowed. I'm taking a much smaller brush here, a little liner brush, and I'm drawing in these tiny little uh, tendrils, these little arms of foam that start to grow up and down on a wave. You'll see them, they're just little bits of foam that are kind of just like wandering around. I want them to generally follow the shape of the wave and I'm keeping this light blue color to the top half of the wave because it's slightly shadowed again with that light blue instead of just going pure white. We have a little bit of light coming through the back which means the water is shadowing that part of the foam as of right now and as we move further down, the water is gonna start to become lighter, not the water, the little foam tendrils, they're gonna start to get lighter and become bright white because the sun will be able to hit it because it's coming over the wave. Does that make sense? Maybe not, you'll see, it'll make sense once I do it. I'm lightening up our light blue just a little, adding some more white to it so it still has a hint of blue in it, but is a lot, it's not quite pure, pure white yet. And I'm taking that and I'm kind of, again, using this almost as a, a blending method. I'm layering this color so there's a little bit of a transition between the uh, light blue and the pure white. I'm taking my little liner brush and I'm adding just a little bit of details like that foam in the background. I'm kind of scrubbing on some loose, loose look, like maybe there's some little bit of water flicking up from that foam. And this is where I start to create the transitions of these little foam tendrils just right at the center part where our watercolor is starting to get lighter from that dark middle part. And I'm also adding it to the little rim of the lip of our water where it's just starting to curve over. Now, taking pure white and a little nice filbert brush, love using filbert brushes, 
and I'm adding in the rest of the foam tendrils. And I'm making these a little bit thicker. You can see I'm using a little bit of a bigger brush. This is a variation of a painting by that artist Wade I was talking about earlier. So just let it be loose. I'm just sketching this on. I'm not worried about making it perfect. I'm just kind of following the flow of what I think water would be and then adding in little bits of this foam wherever I think it's necessary. Making sure not to go over the parts that I made shadowed because I want to show the difference between the shadowed part and the light part. And then I'm also taking this white and I'm dabbing it on the part where the foam is crashing. I want the tapping motion to give that foam some texture. And then as the little white tendrils have dried, I'm adding more color on top just to make sure it's really opaque. I don't want it to be super see-through. I wanna have those really nice stark white standing out very nicely from the water. I'm taking that liner brush again, just using that pure white, and then really in fairly small amounts, adding in the little highlights or little foam bits. I also want to show the curve of the lip of that water, so I'm making these tiny little curved lines to show the shape of the wave, that it has dimension to it. And I don't want to go overboard on this. I want it to continue using a very light little stroke. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush when I'm doing that. I want it to be pretty see-through. I'm taking that same brush and adding little details, little dots, little bits of foam that are spraying up water that's kind of splashing into the air a little bit. This is the part of the painting where the details are the main point. The bulk of the painting is done and it's all about you choosing what little elements you want to continue to add to your painting. There I am using my scraper knife again, cleaning up my palette. I think that's nice and clean for the next colors I make. So I'm taking white and yellow and blue, that's cyan blue, and I'm making this light teal kind of color so I can use it for more detailed elements of our painting. I want it to be light. I want it to be almost like a mint kind of color. And I'm gonna start in pretty small amounts. You can see me using my finger there as a brush when I decided I used too much and it was just a little bit too light for me. Darken it a little more with some blue and some yellow. And I'm just adding it to show where there's more just like specific points of light coming through the wave. The lighter the color on the wave, the more light is coming through it. The darker, the less light. So we can imagine because it's thinner and higher up, the light's coming through this top part of the wave much easier than the lower part of the wave, which is kind of dark. I'm taking this little brush, and I'm just scrubbing it on. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush here. Kind of like dry brushing this. And again, making it have this kind of loose effect. I'm not worrying so much about perfect, perfect brush strokes that are nice and beautiful and even. I'm just blocking in this color to get this neat effect. So I'm taking that tiny little thin brush again because I want to start adding some darker details to the, the curve of our wave. I mix up a darker teal, add a little more of that ultramarine blue. And just in a couple areas, I want to show that maybe there's some lines happening in the water, like there's parts of water that separate as it's curving over into these little streaks. And I'm doing that on the small part of the, the wave that's curving, as well as the big crash. You'll see me add it in too, right there. Just little lines, and I don't wanna overdo it. I just wanna add this little element of detail to our painting here. And this is all up to you. If you decide that you're not into these details that I'm adding, you can do different ones. You can leave them out. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you feel is best for your painting. I made a little bit of a dark teal, dark teal blue. And again, adding some little streaks, little streaks just to give a little more texture to this water. Make it look a little uneven so it's not perfectly smooth as it's curving up into a wave. It's got some, it's got some inconsistencies, some variations, just like real water does. Adding that down to the lower parts, as well as the central part. I kind of want to keep it mostly to the center, but I'm letting it kind of glide down to the bottom and a little bit higher up as well. I'm 
now I'm mixing up a light blue again. And this light blue is actually gonna be some of the waves that are just behind our little wave here. The itty bitty tiny little undulations in the water. I wanna make this color just slightly darker than the blue that we have back there, but have it have enough contrast so that you can see the little waves. And I'm making these little, um, little curvy shapes, just like some like wiggly lines almost that have little peaks on them. And I'm kind of just scrubbing this color on. I'm not adding too much on my brush at one time. I'm just kind of roughing it out a little bit, making sure that my lines as they move further back are getting a little bit thinner and my little waves as they're more forward towards us are just a little bit thicker. I went and added a little more white to that because I wanted to make my little foam tendrils that are crawling up the wave a little more opaque. I could see some of the water of the wave showing through just a little more than I liked. So I'm just going over those again. If yours turned out great the first time, you can totally leave them as is. This is just me adding little extra details that I wanna just make this wave pop a little more. Up to you. These tutorials are just a guide for you to paint these images. You don't have to do it exactly the same as me. You can change up whatever you want. This is all about just showing you the process of how I interpreted another artist's style and piece and converted it into a tutorial. Putting tiny little dots of foam, just like little bits, all those tiny little details. And then I'm taking my pure white again now that the white part of our foam has dried and I'm really, really making it nice and bright. I want it to be really beautifully contrasty. Filling in all the spots. Take your time with this. Pause whenever you need to. You can even slow down this video using YouTube's little settings. Whatever you need to do to make this painting happen, take your time, have patience, or rush it and just make it kind of loose. Either way is great. Do whatever feels good for you for this painting. Adding in some more foam details to so the part where the wave is crashing a little more. Some of those little white streaks of foam are curling up into the wave. adding some just little dots of foam that are just flying around, flying up. Little dots, all the details. You do what feels right for your painting. And this is the most fun part of the painting. I took a flat brush, took my white paint and added a good amount of water to it and I started flicking the brush to add these tiny little speckles of white paint on there. You can see little, little bits just flying on there. I haven't really done this very much, so I wasn't sure it was gonna turn out, but I ended up really like it. I tried two different methods where I take my finger against the brush and flick the actual bristles. And then I also tried pulling on the handle part of the brush so that the paint flicks on there as well. I liked both methods separately, and I took my time doing this. I kind of started out a little conservative and then decided I wanted more speckles. You do it as much as you want, get a feel for it, but after that is done, your painting is totally finished. There's your little wave, looking beautiful. Buddy, just going for that like a shark. Ooh. What is your problem? So there's that little wave painting. Like always, if you have any questions about this painting, let me know in the comments below. Try and get to as many people as possible. Make sure you check out Wade Kanye, Kanye Kowski. I keep messing up his name. Kanye Kowski. I pray to God I'm saying that correctly. I'm sorry, Wade, if I'm saying that wrong. I'll have links to his stuff in my description. If you want to voluntarily support me and my channel, I have a Patreon where I've got some cool rewards for people who decide to support me monetarily. So like always, for my $5 and up patrons, the unedited footage of this painting is gonna be up for you guys. If you wanna try and follow along at a slower pace, I feel like you're probably gonna be seeing a lot more water paintings from me in the future, because that's just deep what I'm into right now. And hopefully, this little man will give me time to be able to paint. Will you, will you please? <laughs> we'll see you in the next video.